So with us today we have Dr. Neil Nedley, who is the president of the Weimar Institute. In addition to being the founder and director of the Nedley Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program, he also runs a small outpatient clinic here on the Weimar campus in addition to serving as a hospitalist in the local Auburn community. And as I understand, you're also an accomplished pilot, is that right? I enjoy that very much. That's wonderful. <laughs> and we're very grateful to have him with us today. He's often busy traveling around uh, giving presentations at various different institutions. Um, so we're thankful to have you with us today and that you're able to carve some time out of your schedule. For Thank us. you very much, Matthew. So something we've been learning about in this episode is nutrition's effect on our body and obviously its profound effect on our physical health. Um, but as a gastroenterologist, we're hoping that maybe you could define the term gut-brain connection and maybe a, a brief kind of everyday definition. Is that something you probably deal with frequently? Well, yes, in my field of gastroenterology, of course, I learned about serotonin and I learned about dopamine and mm -hmm. I learned about all of these different neurotransmitters that are actually used in the brain, but they're produced in the gut. Even melatonin at night under mm -hmm. periods of fasting is produced a large amount in the gut itself, even sometimes more than what the brain produces. Mm. And so uh, when I started learning brain chemistry and becoming more specialized in the mental health arena it was basically a review of all of the GI neuroendocrine system hmm. and there's quite a few nervous cells in the GI tract that are responding and actually producing these neurotransmitters. If we have a very healthy gut we're likely to have a very healthy brain as well. Wow so it's really uh, quite similar and there's a lot of a relation between you're saying the structure in the gut as well as in the brain but how might uh, what we eat be in turn affecting our thoughts and affecting our mental health? Well, it has quite an impact. Now, there is a few differences that are important to recognize. In the GI tract, there's no blood-brain barrier. Hmm. And, but in the brain, there, the arteries become like steel pipes. Hmm. And that's so that we don't get toxins in there to cause um, the toxicity that occurs in the brain is permanent and when those nervous cells die. And so only small molecules can get across. Hmm. And uh, so, for instance, uh, glutathione that can you know, come into the gut, uh, you, can't, you don't get glutathione into the brain. You have to get the substrates to make those individually. So you have to get cysteine to come in, mm -hmm. those individual amino acids will come through into the brain, and then we actually have to produce the glutathione. Same with serotonin. We might have plenty of serotonin in our gut, but we need the, the tryptophan mm -hmm. uh, in the brain itself, and we need to have it carried across that blood-brain barrier in order for us to be able to make serotonin. Mm -hmm. So the serotonin in the bloodstream does not have a lot to do with the serotonin that you're able to make in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so that makes nutrition even more important. We need those substrates to be able to make serotonin. We need a diet that has tryptophan in it. We need a diet mm -hmm. that has carbs because it takes an insulin-mediated mechanism to get tryptophan. It's a large molecule. It's not going to diffuse across the blood-brain barrier without carriers. Mm -hmm. And so it requires insulin, actually, to help it to get into that GI tract. And that's why low-carb diets are not good for mm -hmm. the brain because we're not going to be able to have enough tryptophan to be able to make adequate serotonin if we're on a low-carb diet for a long time. Wow. So what you're eating really has a profound effect on what's available for your brain to use. Exactly. And if you're not eating the appropriate things, then your brain's not going to really have what it needs to be healthy and to be happy. Exactly. So what about the reverse of that? Let's say if somebody is depressed or anxious and they're on a good diet or relatively good diet, can these thoughts or, or having certain other uh, mental um, kind of uh, things that are troubling them be affecting their digestion in a, in a negative way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it can have a very profound effect on the GI tract. Now, if we actually scope an individual, which I do mm -hmm. in my field of GI, these people will have symptoms where I think they have a bad ulcer hmm. or they have something, you know, erosive gastritis and I'll go down with a scope and it's completely normal and we'll biopsy mm -hmm. them and they're normal. And it's actually due to what their nervous system and their brain is doing to their gut. Wow. And if we were to scrape all of the nerves off of the GI tract at the time of surgery, they would weigh four times as much as the entire spinal cord. Hmm. 
Wow. And so what affects this can adversely affect this down here. Uh -huh. And I must uh, confess, it's kind of an interesting uh, a paradigm, but a number of years ago, before I got involved in the GI field, uh -huh. I had a patient come with severe abdominal pain. They had been scoped, they had seen a lot of other physicians, and one of my specialties is the difficult to diagnose patient. So mm -hmm. um, she came with this encyclopedia of things. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at all the different medicines she had tried that didn't work. And there was one of them, that she had not tried called Pepsid, which is famotidine, it's an H2 blocker. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is very unlikely to help her, but she's never tried this. Let's put her on Pepsid. This mm -hmm. was in the old fashioned days when you actually wrote your prescriptions ah. down. <laughs> and so I wrote the prescription and sent it to her. And she comes back a few weeks later and she says, Dr. Nedley, I have to give you a hug. My pain is gone. Wow. This, this was exactly what I needed. It is so great. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at her chart. I gave her Pepsid. Uh -huh. That shouldn't have helped her that much. I said, can I see your bottle? It was relatively simple treatment. Relatively simple yeah. treatment. And actually what her bottle said, because of doctor's handwritings, and mm -hmm. this pharmacist didn't understand my handwriting that well, but the bottle said Paxil, 20 milligrams twice daily. Paxil is an antidepressant. Wow. And so we had helped her depression, uh -huh. which had helped her gut. And she thought I was a brilliant physician, but in reality, <laughs> I made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the pharmacist did. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the pharmacist did. And wow. I was kind of horrified, uh -huh. but at the same time, grateful that um, the Lord can even sometimes work through our mistakes to wow. help people. <laughs> what a wonderful story. That's amazing. You know, it really is. It's not just what you eat, but it's also what you're thinking. And I think sometimes it can be tempting to separate the two and to think it's only about nutrition or it's only about mental health, but I think we've really learned that both of them combined are what bring overall comprehensive health. And Absolutely. So